beginning with Gustav Hammerstein. Luke Kirby, <laughs> Mandy Moore, <laughs> and Edgar Ramirez. <laughs> and I'm realizing I forgot to introduce myself. I'm David Campbell of Vanity Fair. Hello, everybody. Bravo. Hello, everybody. Thank Hello. you for being Hello. here. Hello. What uh, an awesome show, yeah. Um, Edgar, let's start with you. Uh, you are playing here a pretty complicated character, I think it's safe to say. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you knew about Paolo before coming into this project and what made you want to play him? Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, <laughs> for being here. Um, I feel love when you start, when you start <laughs> these conversations. Um, uh, and feel, feel free to jump in. <laughs> uh, uh, so much about you. I know, but we should answer. Yeah, exactly. Please he do. Loved Please do. Actually, character. yeah, actually, actually, yeah. I yeah, exactly. We were very smitten with Paolo <laughs> <laughs> from the get go. Especially you. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was um, um, a, an, an amazing experience. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know much. Um, I did, actually, actually, I was I, I was really surprised that I didn't hear, you know, about what went on for so many years, too many years. Um, in this case, I had I had I had no clue until I was invited um, to to do the to do the show, and then I was completely appalled by you know, the, the, the the extent of 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 these events and for how long he was able to to sustain this web of lies and which for him was basically um more than lies it was just a fantasy you know mm -hmm. which is like the way as an actor that i that i was able to navigate these dark choppy waters um in the story but i think that he always felt that um because it's because you, you will see when you i know that you i think you only saw the first episode but as you as you move through the show, you you'll see that there is no moment of admission or or accountability. There's no moment of introspection for for Paolo, and and I think and it's only like it's only my theory, it's only my you know my, my thoughts as an, as an as an actor. Um, he just decided that this was a fantasy, and everything within the framework of this fantasy was true and he committed to this fantasy until the very end regardless of the consequence was it um dark headspace to be in as an actor uh, just given the depths of what he did and given um where the show goes and how you know intense it gets it was it was at the beginning when i was doing the research which both mandy and i were very disciplined about in containing it and, and keeping it keeping our own research very contained and very um very tight because uh the entire the entire story and everything that we needed we needed to know about the, the characters was already on the page as i tried to research on my own i realized if i do it too much if my knowledge of the character increases it will be very difficult not to judge him as an actor to judge my character so i had to again keep the research very contained so that my headspace wouldn't be that dark because the reality is that as any other human being we we operate no, no pun intended but <laughs> we operate in positive we wake up in the morning thinking or hoping that whatever we do is going to be for the good of the world the good of the people that we love because otherwise we would not get up in the morning so he would never, this is like my friend of mine said many years ago in her conversation, said if the Wicked Witch knew that she was the Wicked Witch, mm -hmm. she would never be the Wicked Witch. Mm -hmm. That you don't see yourself until, I guess, I think that whenever you see the monster on the mirror, that's where then um, 
maybe it's where you, I don't know, you, you touch suicidal zone or it's like when, 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 when you, when the reflection that you get back from the mirror is horrible. And I think that, that, that the character that I play never had that moment, never had that encounter with himself. I think that he, so to answer your question, my, my mental, my, 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 my head space was sounds contradictory, but it was not dark because whatever I was experiencing as Paolo was positive and he was doing everything for the better of, you know, the rest of the people around him and for the, and for the, for the, for the best of, of the woman that he fell in love with, et cetera, et cetera. Mandy, you are, you are not playing the Wicked Witch quite far from it. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you, initially sort of connect with Benita? What about her really um, stuck out to you? Yeah, I um, was a fan of the first season and this opportunity sort of came my way and I read the first three scripts and I was like, wow, yes, I, I wanna be a part of this. I was a big fan of Edgar's and um, I, I loved sort of the tone of the show. It was something I'd never really dipped my toe in before, but I just was struck by how capable and smart Benita is. <clears throat> and this you know badass career woman at the top of her field and the fact that she was able to find herself you know the victim of this level of manipulation and deception i i hope that she's able as the series goes on to sort of act as a conduit for the audience to sort of be able to see themselves because it if it could happen to her it could happen to anybody you know um so i was really fascinated by that dynamic and the duality of the fact that like this was very much a love story at its core, at least the first half of the season, and sort of getting to understand the through line and the dichotomy between like who, you know, Paolo was on the, in his personal life and obviously how that seeped into the professional and sort of just kind of went back and forth. I found that really, a really interesting dynamic to explore too. Yeah, one thing I love about the show and your performance in the show is um, while she does fall you know, into this spell, this man's spell, she's never a victim. She sure. remains a really nuanced character, and I, I imagine that was pretty important for you. So can you talk about maintaining that part of her, particularly as things start to go awry? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of dignity um, in, in even in the midst of what she experiences and how her life sort of falls to pieces. I think on the surface, if someone were to say, yeah, uh, you're gonna meet this doctor and fall in love with him and he's gonna, you know, prom propose to you and promise that the Pope is gonna officiate your wedding. Like, obviously that seems totally implausible, but I, I think again, when someone is this masterfully manipulative, they plant those seeds so quietly and slowly that you never really see it happening. And that's how she sort of fell victim and prey. I think she also was also in this very like specifically vulnerable moment in her life that allowed her to be susceptible to to this you know this man's like deceptive ways um but again like she, i i i feel like as her journey sort of continues throughout the series like i i think there's a lot of redemption for her in how she chooses to sort of you know take stock of her life and how empowering it is to like tell her story and I hope ultimately people walk away thinking, okay, there's no, there, there's hopefully some like destigmatizing the idea of being a victim and the shame and the guilt that sort of can come along with someone finding themselves in a position like this. I think uh, really in the first episode, we see a journalist, people in the medical community fall under the spell and really be lured into what he was promising. Um, so for those playing members of the medical community, um, Luke, for example, um, how, how do you how do you walk into a role like that in that kind of position with a, a level of skepticism, but also um, this understanding that there is so much hype and excitement around this great figure with this great you know, cure? I think that Nathan Gamelli sort of abides by a, a, a kind of very uh, strict and traditional principle around medicine and science, you know, guided by empirical data, you know, peer review, like all of these things are set up for a reason. And, uh, and he, he, you know, that's, he, he believes in the, the, the long story of science, you know, it takes, it takes multiple generations to find out 
you know, whether or not a hypothesis is right or wrong, it's not something that a person can do in one lifetime. And so seeing somebody who holds this promise immediately, you know, uh, rings a bell for him and is peculiar and odd and a little dubious. I also think that Nate's probably, uh, you know, a little envious of this man's sort of, his charm, his, his sort of aura, you know, the, the sort of high degree of adulation. He's a very talented surgeon, you know, he, he, he has great acumen. I think that that's, all, you know, I, you know, I don't think he's void of competition. I think there's a there's an aspect to it that's also about that. Um, yeah. Too bad Anita didn't come talk to us. <laughs> we could have told her a few things. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Ashley, um, in terms of your character, there's an interesting question of complicity that's really introduced right away because, of course, as this rolls on, I'm sure you can imagine that things are going to uh, get complicated for those who uh, are working with him. So how did you strike that balance? I think that there's an element of denial in the complicity, at least in the, the first half of the show, um, because you want to believe what you want to believe. I mean, you Luke talked about something being too good to be true, but um, I think Anna really wanted it to be true. She's incredibly ambitious and she meets this charismatic famous doctor whose research is aligning with her own research um, and it, it comes at a time when things like stem cell research were like people thought this was the great hope i mean we still kind of do but it hasn't been proven um and so she wanted to believe what she wanted to believe and i think when she realizes that she's been complicit in in harming people that's a real hurtful moment for her for herself it's quite heartbreaking, I think, because she 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 ruins everything she's worked for. Gustav, with your character as well, there is this balance of we get to know his personal life, and um, you're also at the center of this effort to uh, find out what's really going on. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and, and playing those two sides? Yes. Uh, you know, I have family myself, three daughters, so I could definitely relate to the having people depending on you uh, when you have to kind of you decided to to stand up for the truth even though it might hurt you or even maybe devastate you uh, and of course I I could relate to the whole story because I'm Swedish so I, I know that <laughs> I've actually been to this Karolinska I, I took my kids there and I've been at this hospital ward prison <laughs> ward <laughs> hospital ward at 2015 when actually Paolo was uh, active there but luckily I had a sinus problem. <laughs> so otherwise <laughs> I, could be, I could be an actor. <laughs> in the show, in the show, maybe my name would be here and another actor would play me. So, but you know. Would you like that better? <laughs> no, because I'm so nervous. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, what was the question? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, this story was, of course, I, I knew a lot about Paolo because, you know, he kind of damaged the Swedish reputation. Mm -hmm. So I, for me, it was fantastic to play the Swede in this story and the whistleblower to try to get back a little bit of the reputation back to Sweden. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to play a whistleblower. <laughs> for the three of you, you guys get to work together in the show. What, can you just talk about working together a little bit and getting to be a part of that kind of a narrative that's more of the thriller element, the take it down the bad guy element? It's awful to work with them. It's terrible. <laughs> it's a real bad experience. But it was great. I think very quickly. <laughs> the first time we're hearing. Very quickly, we had a dynamic that felt really familiar and we slotted hostile. into that host a hostile, yeah. familiar dynamic that we that we slotted into and I am the last uh, of the whistleblowers to join the whistleblowing and um, you eventually accepted me I think that we accepted today yes I talked him into <laughs> accepting you yeah. thank you thank you it was a real joy to get to be in this little dynamic and it kind of happened very you know our little energy happened very um, very quickly we just opened a door and there we were and it's it sort of uh, you know f we, f we felt like real friendship Aww. yeah really really nice 
and and you know and, and kind of uh, you know sibling had sibling rivalry aspects. And, uh, it was really not you and me. Really fun. No, oh, did we? No, we were brothers. I would never. Yeah, that's, sibling, that's, 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 sibling, yeah. That, that's what siblings I, are. I, 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 I just was teaching me English. <laughs> But I think the first scene that I did and you did as well was uh, the scene who is in the first episode, uh, uh, which is in the first yes, episode, yeah, yeah. You're at the football, the soccer bar. So it was like all in, you know, getting to know each other. Yeah. And you were looking at me, why is That's this right, guy right. screaming? Am I going to do yeah. eight episodes with this yeah. crazy sweep? <laughs> but then to, pers per pers to pursue that sort of that righteous quest, together was also really, you know, it was, it, it, it was, it, yeah, it just felt very uh, seamless, you know, just to kind of move into that little make believe, it was great. Yeah, yeah it's a real pleasure to watch. Yeah, thanks. Um, the love story between the two of you centers this show in a rather dark and twisted at times way, um, so how did you two develop that together? Oh, it was awful. <laughs> so hard to fall in love with Edgar. Um, <laughs> no, I, I too feel like our chemistry was sort of palpable and it was on the surface and it was immediate. Like, it was just so easy to chat with you and talk about the way we both work. And I think we're very much alive in that sense. Yeah, very much so. And it always felt comfortable. I felt very safe immediately with Edgar and sort of our incredible crew and Ashley Michael and Jen Morrison, who directed these first four episodes, like, which is really where the, the love story like lives and then falls apart. Um, so it was, yeah, it also felt seamless. It was, it was just so much fun to kind of, yeah, just truly fall in love and like really give yourself leaning into that dynamic of like the ultimate fairy tale. I mean, I think for my character, she was a single mother. She was really work focused. And the idea of a love like this entering her life was something she never really dreamed for herself. So I think it was hard for her to initially buy in and ultimately abandon her, you know, journalistic ethics to cross those boundaries and cross that line. and give in and, and you know, in, endeavor to have this relationship with Paolo, but um, yeah, it was the, the work aspect of it all did not feel like work. It was, yeah, I agree, it was so easy to fall in love with you <laughs> and, um, and, and, and to feel equally as safe and as protected by you. So it was immediately we felt that we could be each other's safety net while navigating these very strange, dark waters. And I think that's precisely the love story that exists at the very core of the piece, at the very core of the series, what makes it so interesting, or at least for us, because it creates attention right away. I mean, you know, I mean, this case is famous. I mean, this case is, you, people, a lot of people know, a lot of people will discover it, but also a lot of people around the world know the story. They know exactly how it ends. But it's in ending actually, and and I think that having a love story so so strong, so palpable um, at the get go already creates a very palpable tension, and I think that is the just just the position of the love story of the real of the light of two two people falling in love against the darkness of what is happening on the medical side as almost two trains that are going you know to to, to crash because it's basically his life, you know, like the both aspects of his life, the, the personal and the professional one. I, I as a, you know, as, as I was reading the the, the, the the episodes and understanding how the whole show was gonna play out, I found it fascinating. And I think that that also opens, opens up the space of the room to basically talk about, it goes beyond the medical, it goes beyond the story at hand to open up the space to discuss and to explore greater subjects of humanity, hope, trust, um, unfinished chapters, which is something that Mandy and I have been um, discussing today as we have these conversations with the press and now, and now with, with, with you here, because a lot of thoughts are coming up right now because it is the first time that we're talking, that we're thinking about these characters as actors outside of the characters. And, and I think there's something about about this guy, um, the guy that I played, 
he was very sensitive i mean unfortunately very sensitive in identifying the unfinished stories of everyone so they're like unfinished chapters and these people con artists they know exactly they have the sensitivity to identify where are not only the vulnerabilities what are the stories that their targets haven't finished the loose ends in their lives so that's what he did with all the characters aside with the exception of my dear <laughs> friend him. here who never you know he never revealed but that is the thing he never opened up you know and um and um and not and and and, 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 and it is a chemistry thing because what you but what, what, what you said earlier and have we, we have been discussing all day um it is very easy to to fall into the victim blaming of anyone who has been at the unfortunate receiving end of a manipulation to say how could you believe this guy how could you believe this person but the reality is that no one is exempt i mean no one is above the possibility of being deceived actually the question should not be why how could you believe him no why is there people are there people who are willing to devote their biggest talents to damage other people that is a question here. And I think that the characters that are played used all of his talents to identify the weak spots, the aspirations, the the the, the places, you know, the, the childhood dreams of other people, the fairy tale, the ambition to become a great um, a, a great scientist, to become another great scientist. I think that that's and we're basically talking about we're transcending the medical. We're talking about how how we can all be, you know, a victim of 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 of, 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 of a deceit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very clearly a role and a, a subject matter that stays with you. Yeah. Um, and as you were saying earlier, there's an incredible amount of information mm -hmm. on this man on this case. There's a Vanity Fair article. Yeah. There is a podcast. Yeah, uh, there are news articles because, as you say, this is not even finished yet. Um, so, for all of you, like what? Parts of research did you find helpful in crafting your characters diving into this world? Whoever wants to start on that one. I found the podcast really helpful, at least from Benita's perspective. I mean, it is her story in her own words, her own voice. I found the Vanity Fair article pretty enlightening as well. I, there was so much like source material at our hands, at our fingertips, that um, it just, and so much on the page, the scripts, the, the written word for us as actors that like, so much of our job in the research department, I guess, was done for us um, in that sense. But yeah, I loved I loved the podcast specifically too. Yeah, and I can say you know we, we weren't really we our characters were like a mashup. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I I will say it's it was all in the script, and I, I have to say that the the, the showrunner Ashley Michael Holborn was really. Luke was talking about open doors, and she's the person that made all the good things in this show, you know, come true. Yeah. She, because she's immediately opened the door to, to me, and I, I, I guess all the actors, you know, yeah. she wanted to include us and ask us what, what are your thoughts and how do you feel about this. So you, you felt included mm -hmm. and a part of it, and you could explore and uh, experiment, you know. Uh, the characters and, and you know work with it and so the, the and you know it's based on f real characters but you're doing a, you have to we have to rely on the fiction you know we you, you can't this not this is not a doc documentary you have to you have to find your own doctor journalist you know the spirit of, of the of the reality and, and find your own dreams and hopes and, and, and act that out <laughs> on the screen <laughs> <laughs> on the TV. <laughs> Ashley, Luke, did you guys have to get your science down? I mean, well, I never had that. <laughs> um, I kept, I keep that down. Down. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I think it's true. Ashley Michael was a, you know, she was such a great resource. Uh, for any kind of curiosity, any information, any facts, any peculiarities, just sort of, you know, what at the end of it really just felt like a kind of a, a reliant presence 
to sort of then make you feel free to uh, you know step onto the playground and you know muck about a bit and see what, what landed. Um, in terms of you know the the uh, my time at uh, doctor school is that what it's called doctor school yeah, that's exactly what doctor, call it that. doctor yeah. school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were also we were also provided, you know, a, a great uh, deal of information and whatever we want. You know, we got to go and witness the operations. We were, you know, we all went into, we stood in, sur or in surgeries and watched people get cut open and smelled the flesh burning and looked at the bones and saw the blood getting sucked out. And, you know, it was uh, it, it was remarkable a really great insight uh, into the kind of responsibility that, you know, that medical practitioners have, you know, you, the bodies when put under, you know, just start to just look like slabs, uh, you know, and, uh, and a, doctors are, you know, surgeons have to be so m mechanical and precise in their work, in the time that they have to do their work. You know they can't really spend a lot of time thinking about the oh look at this person and what do you think about their family and their you know their backstory <laughs> they have to get in there and, and it, just being in that presence was a real uh, really illuminating for me about how you know how how close doctors have to the line that they have to walk you know and they have a huge responsibility to remind themselves of you know that these are people and you know. They're not to be experimented on. I mean, you know, things would be a lot easier if we just said, oh, yeah, we can just experiment and see what happens. But that's not the deal yet. <laughs> so the last word to you, Ashley? Um, yeah. I mean, I second what, what you guys said. But the, the podcast was a huge source of inspiration for me because I was already a fan of it. I love true crime podcasts anyway maybe a little too much um, and so I had always was already very much aware of it and was excited to take part and then for the research getting to attend those surgeries was really really important for me it gave me a freedom on the day when we were performing surgeries I just had that knowledge in the back of my head and we also were really lucky to have a surgical consultant on set when we were doing surgeries and a lot of the other players in those surgery scenes were um, were nurses or doctors themselves so they were on hand um, and I really enjoyed I enjoyed learning like the medical jargon stuff that is also how you that's the technical term <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think all that all that prep all that work really shows in this series so I hope you guys check out the rest of the season thank you all so much <laughs>